From the Exarch, is it? And with that mirror of his, he can watch your every move, you know. You probably think you're talking to yourself. And still, he's keeping you well fed. Judging by his people's faith in him, he seems to be a decent sort. But so much about him remains shrouded in mystery. Like what was he doing back in my day? There was no such person when I was around. Mm, a lot's happened since the flood, though. Since I was set adrift. I know little more than you do of this city's history in the Exarch's past. Not that it matters. It's Emmett Selk we should be concerned about. When our world was about to be consumed by light, the Asian in white appeared before us. He said that the only way for us to live on was to bring about the rejoining. Desperate as we were, we heeded his words, not realizing that the flood was of the Asian's own making. They cannot be trusted. None of them. But Emmett Selk had one thing right. One should not fight blindly. That's what we did. And it cost us everything we held dear. What about Seto? What is that to say? <sighs> All right. He's done some growing. When we were traveling together, he was nowhere near as big. And he obviously couldn't speak. I had no idea how much that medallion meant to him. What about you, anyway? You must have a friend like Seto. Chocobo, perhaps? Come on, you tell me something for a change. Ah, oh, there you are. You're just in time to welcome our guest. Please. Did I not explicitly tell you that we would be meeting again soon? Lest you forget, I made you a promise. I have no intention of meddling with your mission. I come only to observe. Your Exarch friend in particular has piqued my curiosity. Summoning you all like that. Most impressive. You honestly expect us to believe you've come only to observe. 
or that you might deign to lift a finger to aid our cause if called upon. Even if there were a sliver of truth in your words, I would never accept your help. Not in my darkest hour. Not after all the suffering your kind has wrought. So petty. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. Wage your war against the Sin Eaters. Put each and every Light Warden to the sword. Prove yourselves heroes, brave and true, and I will be glad to embrace you as allies. Allies worthy of bearing the burden of truth. Surely such a partnership would be preferable to yet another round of fisticuffs. And thus did the olive branch wither and die. Pity. Well, let no man say I did not try, futile as it was. Though I suspect you will seek me out when you grow tired of making the same mistakes. Difficult decisions lie ahead of you. Decisions best made with the benefit of knowledge to which only the Eternal are privy. For now, I shall resume my shadowy vigil. Whatever you choose to do, make sure it's worth watching, would you? all about a vain attempt to make us doubt our chosen course most like as if we'd believe a word that passed his lips unless you think there is some truth in what he says I'm sure you will. But consider for a moment. If he meant simply to lead us astray, he could have done so without revealing himself. At least, not in the manner he did. It goes without saying that an alliance with the Assians is out of the question. But since we have no way of knowing where they might be hiding, it seems only logical to press on with our mission, even if our enemy seems content for it to succeed. Then let us discuss the Sin Eaters. I would begin by thanking you all for your efforts thus far. In striking down the Light Wardens of Lakeland and Ilmeg, you have accomplished more in your short time here than all of our forces managed in the last century. That may be, but the Wardens of Calusia, Armareng, and Raktika remain. Indeed and their precise whereabouts are as yet unknown. Which is why I propose we divide our forces and conduct a systematic survey of each region. Once we have found our quarry, we may then determine how best to proceed. I'll take our meringue in that case. I know the lie of the land well enough. If there are no objections, I will make for Calusia. I have connections there both in and around Yulmor that may prove useful. Then I would ask that you journey to Raktika. There you will find Yustola. With her assistance, I doubt the Warden will evade your grasp for long. Is Yustola the conjurer you and Uriange used to talk about? That's right. Though we haven't spoken much since she left for the forest. I fear I may be to blame for that. I had every intention of relaying the news of your arrival, but she is disinclined to speak with me. You have visited her, have you not? Might I trouble you to... It would be no trouble. My thanks. While you are all out in the field, I shall be here attending to business. I had somewhat fancifully contemplated joining the search myself, 
but other matters demand my attention. What's that? A missive from Lord Vorthry. He invites me to join him in Yulmore to discuss the recent conflict at Leda Loran. And? Did he even bother to offer any bait? It's obviously a trap. I should be surprised if it were not. Nevertheless, I must seize this opportunity to speak with him, even if only a few words are exchanged. Though my power will be much diminished so far from the tower, it is a risk I am willing to take. Master Alphano, might I impose upon you to accompany me to your war prior to beginning your reconnaissance? Of course. Then let us make ready. Safe travels to you all. No matter how far he goes, man cannot resist looking back on the path he has walked. The untold stories and secrets of the past can be more alluring than the promise of tomorrow. And so he braves the forests of Raktika in search of mystery and wonder. Of Ronka to which all seekers of hidden truths are inevitably drawn. We have arrived. Vast though these woods may be, they are, by and large, uninhabitable. Not so the swamps of Sidia, however, whose sparse foliage permitted man a foothold. No lands must remain beyond our grasp. Go forth, conquer, rule. Forgive me, a sudden pang of nostalgia for those halcyon days. Exploring virgin territories, subjugating primitive peoples, all for the glory of Garlemald. If you've brought your ivory standard, I'll be happy to tell you where to stick it. Can we not simply take a moment to enjoy the view together? Or would you rather I spied on you from the shadows? <sighs> Much more of this and I may very well begin to regret my show of good faith. If you really want to stay, then help us fight. Mm, no, I think not. I am an observer, nothing more. Even shielded by the shadows of these boughs, I feel the light's presence most keenly. To accompany you is taxing enough. To fight is out of the question. I will suffer your company if I must, but not your commentary. see little sign of recent activity, nor hath any meaningful progress been made with the reconstruction. Mayhap Yishtola sought shelter elsewhere. Come, let us quit this place. Now, surround them!
These Sinators, they're not like the others. There's a reason for that. Lower your weapons, please. We mean you no harm. How is it they can speak? It's a Sin Eater trick. They mean to kill us all. Perhaps they speak the truth. Oh, for the love of... I had hoped that by accompanying you, we might come to understand one another. But all I have come to understand is that you have a knack for inflaming the natives. You've committed the cardinal sin of boring me. And so, I retire to the shade. Good luck. Did you see that one disappear? Uh, I think I preferred La Habrea. Enough. Runar, report. Master Matoya! We apprehended them as you ordered, but are you certain these are Sin Eaters? The intense light of the ether I saw was unmistakable. If not Sin Eaters, then what? Tis passing queer that Yishtola should mistake us for the enemy, is it not? Mayhap it hath been too long since last she beheld the radiance of thine ether. Master Matoya, hath time truly made strangers of us? Nay, I recognize you, Uriange, Thancred. And this is Minfilia of the First, of whom you spoke before. Just so. And knowing as thou must that we come in peace, might I prevail upon thee to have thy comrades lower their arms? First explain this other presence in your company, the one I know not. There is but one manner of creature in this world whose ether is suffused with such an abundance of light. Mine apologies, Master Matoya, but thou art mistaken. Before thee standeth our dearest comrade, the truest hero among us. Though she is but recently arrived here in the first, not one but Two Light Wardens have already perished by her most puissant hand. It, it cannot be. Master Matoya? Lower your weapons. Forgive us this hostile welcome. Come. I would give you a proper introduction to Raktika and its people. Slitherbow is the largest of the blessed settlements. 
They worship no gods, instead revering darkness itself. It is a curious kind of faith, but one which has granted them the strength to persevere in the wake of the flood. I hope you weren't expecting a grand feast by way of welcome. They are simple people. Now, I would hear of your travels away from prying ears. Come. You seek the Light Warden of Raktika. In the days after I arrived in the first, I too relied upon the Crystal Exarch for guidance. But his penchant for secrecy and the telling of half truths soon lost him my trust, and thus did I strike out on my own. My work eventually led me here to the forest, which I have come to know like the back of my hand. I cannot say with certainty where your quarry is hiding, but I am confident I can narrow the search. Well, go on. Some few thousand years ago, this forest stood at the heart of the Empire of Ronka. A great many relics of that civilization can still be found to the east in Ixmaya, or rather could be found, were the area not fiercely guarded. Ixmaya, you see, is home to a tribe of warriors whose lineage is said to date back to the time of the Empire. Any attempt to enter their territory is met with lethal force. They offer no warnings and suffer no trespasser to escape. Needless to say, my every attempt to survey the area has been thwarted. Mayhap the Warden hideth there, full knowing none may approach it for fear of these protectors. As for the tablet... I find the timing of its discovery suspiciously convenient. If I did not know better, I would think someone was trying to curry favor with me. Regardless, it will take time to decipher these writings. Yet I would not be at all surprised if they somehow held the key to entering Ixmaya unmolested. The Exarch has a nose for serendipity. If there is aught I can do to assist thee in unraveling their secrets, thou needst only ask. Thank you, Urianger. I may well take you up on that offer. While we set to work, might I suggest you take a tour of the city? Should you be in any doubt as to the importance of your role as the Warrior of Darkness, the people here will surely cure you of it. I must say, Ishtola, while most of us have struggled to come to terms with our altered circumstances, you seem to have adapted rather well. Lest you forget, Master Matoya and I dedicated our lives to uncovering the truth which hides at the heart of our world. Though separate, the fate of this reflection is nevertheless bound to that of our home. That I would be daunted by such an invaluable opportunity is absurd. But what of you, Thancred? Could it be that you are still struggling to come to terms with the nature of your young companion? My struggles are none of your concern. 
Quite why you would speak thus and in this company, I do not know. Perhaps you left more of yourself back in the source than I assumed, if you'll excuse me. He understands that I'm not the same, that I'm not her. Understands, perhaps, but does not accept. The question being whether he ever will. And whether you will, more importantly. As difficult as your circumstances may be, they are yours, not his. Tis you and you alone who bears ultimate responsibility for your life. But you need not make any hard choices now. Why not go and get some fresh air? Clear your head. It seemed only right that we show our faces. May we join you? Let us begin. I thank you all for coming to pay respects to our fallen daughter of the night. In the light, she was known as Todia, but in the dark, we shall remember her always as Menin. Let us each take a moment to offer her our prayers. We entrust her now to the night's sweet embrace. In darkness will she be free from pain and suffering, now and forevermore. May her soul find peace in the sunless sea of heaven, and in the love we bear for her in our hearts. represents the night sky, the sunless sea of heaven. you now, O bringer of shadow, to lead this gentle soul unto the sea. We call upon you, O warrior of darkness, to deliver her unto paradise everlasting.
I am told you assisted in the preparations for the service. On behalf of the Blessed, you have my sincerest thanks. The enduring legend of the Warrior of Darkness owes much to the traditions of these people. And none were more ardent in their faith than Todia. She would have been greatly moved by your presence. deliver her to the heavens, but if you could deliver the night sky to her people, the real night sky, it would be the next best thing. Their prayers would finally be answered. They could gaze up at the firmament and see their ancestors in every twinkle of the stars. We cannot allow their hopes and dreams to drown in the light. We have to bring back the dark. If we don't, who will? Forgive me, thinking of all those we have lost. I... No, it's all right. We will bring back the dark. Mayhaps sooner than later, in fact. Arionje and I have finished deciphering the tablet, and its contents were most illuminating. Let us reconvene in my chambers. We have much to discuss.